Hi, I'm Marcus Ransom. I'm a technical delivery manager here at CompNow focused on Apple technology. I'm going to do a deep dive into deploying the new Apple Silicon devices so we can get an understanding of what's required to be able to use these in your environment. The deployment workflows for Apple Silicon using automated device enrollment and MDM is very much the same as we've been using on Intel machines, following the directions Apple is moving us away from imaging and through to over-the-air provisioning. There are a couple of things that are different that we need to keep in mind. The first one is that Rosetta 2 is not installed on the devices out of the box. So we need to make sure that if we're going to be deploying anything that requires Rosetta 2, we need to run a script to install that on the machines before those workflows run. There's a couple of ways that we can do this. We can either run a script directly from our MDM, or we can also make this a post-install script in a package that's deployed, especially if we're going to be using that as an enrollment package to make sure that Rosetta 2 is enabled before any of our workflows start. When we're packaging applications to deploy onto Apple Silicon, especially if we want them to run before Rosetta has been installed, there's a couple of things we need to be mindful of. The first one is that the package needs to be set to have the host architecture supporting ARM64 as well as the old Intel x86-64 in order for that package to run without Rosetta. There's a couple of ways that we can achieve this with various different packaging tools. One of them you can see here using the Packages app is to just ensure that in the host architecture field we've got ARM64. This is especially important when we're using packages and enrolment with automated device enrolment, because we want those to run before we've got the ability to deploy scripts, unless one of these packages itself is installing Rosetta. All of the major MDM providers are Apple Silicon ready, so check with their support pages to make sure you're running the correct version to be able to deploy to Apple Silicon. The directions we've been heading in with Intel devices are also the directions we need to follow with Apple Silicon keeping our initial deployments as light as possible, and then letting the users download any additional applications or configurations on demand. Make the onboarding process as quick as possible, get the devices enrolled in the hands of the users, and then get them to do the things they need to do, and worry about the applications they may or may not need later. There are some important changes to be aware of in the way that we reprovision Apple Silicon. Because it's running the same internals as an iPhone or an iPad, we get to use Apple Configurator running on a Mac to be able to wipe and restore the operating system onto the device. To do that, we need to boot the Mac into DFU mode. I'm gonna show you how we do that now. As we can see in the Apple article we've got linked here, it's holding down the power, control option, and the right hand shift key for a certain amount of time, which then gets the machine to appear in Apple Configurator. So over an Apple configurator on this Mac that's connected with the USB power cable that comes with the devices, we right click, we click on restore, and we tell the device we want it to be wiped. Now the first time it's going to download the IPSW file. We're used to seeing the same sort of thing when we're reprovisioning iPhones and iPads. If we've already downloaded the latest one onto the machine, then it's a fairly fast process to rebuild a device. I'm seeing between six to eight minutes from beginning to end if we've already got the file downloaded. Okay, so we can see here after we've reprovisioned the device, we're back up booting into the standard uh, setup assistant where we can use automated device enrollment. So clicking through here, we see the remote management window we're using Azure authentication here. So I'm just gonna let it know who I am so we make sure it's not somebody else setting up one of our devices. Multi-factor authentication for security. And away we go. So as I described before, the pre-stayed packages that I've got coming down here include installing Rosetta using a script as a post install. And the other package that I've got coming down for my DEP notify splash screen have got that ARM64 architecture so that it knows that it can deploy them onto these devices. We find that when you the user is creating the account at the setup assistant that they're going to be using, you get the best Apple experience on a device. And we can see here, once the user's logged in, we like to throw up a little splash screen, just letting the user know what's going in. We're just installing a couple of pieces of software, just enough for the user to get going on their device and giving them some feedback about what's happening. 
and it's just a matter of logging out to ensure file vault encryption has taken place because security is something we should always be mindful of. Logging into our file vault encrypted machine is just the same as it is on Intel. We've quickly provisioned a device and we've got everything else that the user may need available in a self-service portal here. So we can see that the deployment methodologies are very similar to what we've been doing with Intel devices, especially if we're closely following Apple's principles of automated device enrolment. But it is important to make sure that the specific way you're dealing with this in your environment matches and works with the technology in the Apple Silicon. If you've got any questions about Apple Silicon, especially around how it needs to work in your environment, get in touch with CompNow. We'd love to help you see how you can get the benefits of this amazing technology and start using it as soon as possible. Yeah.